Hi there, this is Phil Simborg of the Backgammon Learning Center. I'm the co-founder along with Perry Gartner. And about uh, every year for about the last 20 years or so, I have been giving a lecture at the Novi Tournament, the Michigan Summer Championships run by Carol Cole. This year it was especially fun for me because I took second place, losing to the great Frank Raposa in the finals. Great tournament, a lot of fun. Saturday morning I ran a um, what I call the War of the Giants where everybody was tested on some really interesting plays and very, very much to the surprise of almost everybody there except me, the winner by far was Carter Maddig, winner of the Cyprus International uh, Merit Championships a couple of years ago, beating the incredible Lars Trebolt in the finals, an amazing win, and Carter proved that it wasn't just all luck, that he really does have some great insights, and I've been playing with Carter for, uh, oh, two, three, four times a week for the last several years, many, many years, and I know his game is great. So it was no fluke, but it was a surprise compared to the many people that we had. Let's see how you would do with this quiz. So I'm going to give you the same quiz, the 10 questions that I gave Carter. I'm not going to give you the explanations. That's something you'd have to pay for. Perry Gartner uh, worked very hard to come up with really good explanations, but we had very good explanations from the people uh, on uh, standing by. So let's just get started. Let's see how you do in the quiz. You can pause the video if you need more time. I gave everybody about a minute. So it's a money game. Red to play 6-3 here. Your inner board is to the right. Think about how you would play 6-3. Take as much time as you like by pausing the video before I show the answer. And uh, usually the plays aren't going to be close. So obviously here's a situation where you run, you hit, you point. There's all different plays. I'll shut up and let you think about it. Okay, and I've rolled out all the answers, and the answer in this situation is to run. Most people like to take a more active approach and hit or point on the ace point, which would be the second best play, and as you can see, if you understand extreme gammon, that would be quite a blunder. So running is the right play here. It doesn't get better. It's going to get worse, and um, you have to come up with your own logic why. I'm not going to get into the, into the logic at this point. Let's just see how you do. Give yourself a point. Carter scored eight points. He almost scored nine. He barely missed one. The next best player scored, I believe, four points. That's how tough these were. So don't feel bad if you miss them. Number two. Red to play 5-1. And the answer, again, if you need more time, pause the video. Make the three point. Hitting would be about a four, almost a 5% error. Not a blunder, but not good. Number three. I'm going to go through these quickly now. Now it's blues play. Blue to play 4 2. Here comes the answer. You can see the first two plays are close, but they both include coming to your opponent's 20 point. Coming up here and pressuring them, getting those checkers out, and put pressure on them up here. Okay, let's go to the next play, number four. Blue to play 4-2. We'll save you time, you can see the race. The red is up 18 pips in the race. That doesn't count wasted. you got to figure that out for yourself. But blue play 4-2. How do you play it? The answer is stay back. You're down so much in the race, your best chance is to get a shot. And it's not too bad to play both to the ace point. Either one is very, very close. The main thing is to stay back and wait for that shot. Let's go on. Number five. Blue to play 6-3. Here comes the answer. Most people, I think, hit. Hitting is wrong here. Got to figure it out why. Better off making a priming play here. 
another thought here is, so you leave him a six. You think he's going to come off this five point and hit you with a six? He might. Wouldn't be that horrible, though. That's one of the main reasons for this play. Let's move on. Number six. Blue to play 4-1. It is a money game. Blue holding the cube. How does blue play floor one? And the answer. Just play quietly. Very hard thing for many people to do. Most people would play 11-7 and hit and move on. You're up enough in the race where you don't have to worry about the race. You just don't want to leave a shot. And you'd like red to go ahead and move. Let's go on. Number seven. Anybody close to Carter's score yet? Please email me. I'd love to know. Red to play 2-1 from the bar. You can come in on the two or you can come in on the one. That part you have to do. One of those two. You either make your opponent's two point or you hit. I find prime versus prime checker plays the hardest. They are the toughest for me to get right. I've been working on it for years and I'm going to keep working on it until I get it right. The answer? You don't hit. You come in. It's all about timing. You don't want to help Blue's timing by hitting him. You hope he cracks first and you hope you roll a six sometime soon. Remember, you've got two sixes to roll, but he's got a six and a one six to roll. So really, you got better timing than him if you roll the six. Okay, next play. Red to play one one. All right, I'm going to give you the answer. Again, pause it if you need more time. Making the five points a given, it's not a terrible play to make the seven point and unstack, which is, by the way, my wrong play that I would have made, that I did make over the board in this play. But the advanced anchor sure destroys any chance of blue to time you or blitz you. Next one. Red to play 3 1. Blue's got seven checkers off. This is a containment game. These are very hard to play. Most people don't think Extreme Gammon plays it very well. I'm willing to bet Extreme Gammon against any human. Except maybe Jim Pasco and Mochi. And Michi and Akiko. You know, one of the very top players maybe can play better than Extreme Gammon. But it would be close. Okay, red to play 3-1. I'm going to shut up. Give you the answer. Play very quietly on the outside. Make the point. Why do you make the 11 point? Because you don't want to give them a good 9, I guess. And it's a very good builder for the 7 point and the 5 point. You really don't want to get hit here. Getting hit isn't disaster, but it's not great. You might, you might come in and miss, and then it's curtains. So I don't think too many people found this play over the board, but I'm pretty sure uh, Jerry Tanzi and Carter did, as I recall. Yeah, I remember Tansy got this right. He's one of the fine players in the room that got four right. Okay, let's go with uh, another one. I think this is the last one. Yeah, this is number 10. Red to play 4-3. These spider plays are hard. You make the nine point, you make the four point, you hit loose, you bring one in. And the answer, make the nine point. Make it hard for blue to get out. It's a good blocking point. You're not that afraid of his board later if you have to leave a shot. All kinds of good reasons to make the nine point. Well, there's your 10 question quiz. Again, congratulations to Carter. And I hope you enjoyed it. And um, come to Michigan next year. I'm on my way to Monte Carlo. Can't wait to go to that tournament. And it's always one of the best in the world. And 
aside from the fact that it's the World Championships, and I just feel very fortunate at this time in my life to be able to go to these great tournaments all over the world. Thank you, Backgammon, for supporting the Backgammon Learning Center, where we have 25 teachers in nine, I think we're up to 11 languages now, where we're teaching in 11 languages, and uh, we're constantly bringing on more teachers because we have more students, and more of our students are winning tournaments and winning money all over the world. So come visit us at the Backgammon Learning Center or backgammonlearningcenter.com. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.